Hello everyone and welcome to the tiny book reading of Lilo and Stitch. This is published by Insight Editions, so let's begin. Lilo and Stitch On planet Turo, the leaders of the Galactic Federation faced Dr. Jumba Jukaba. He stood before them accused of illegal genetic experimentation. When his time came to speak, Jumba declared his innocence. He swore his experiments were only theoretical. Suddenly, a small ship floated into the room. It opened to reveal the very creature Jumba had been accused of creating, Experiment 626. Caught in his own lie, Jumba had no choice but to introduce his creation. Experiment 626, he explained, was bulletproof, fireproof, and completely bent on destruction. The creature growled and snarled. Horrified, the Grand Councilwoman banished Experiment 626. The Councilwoman's guard, Captain Gantu, was more than happy to oblige. Locking Experiment 626 in a small cell, he prepared to blast the creature into space. But Experiment 626 was willy and dangerous. He managed to break free of the cell and steal away in a police cruiser. When the Grand Councilwoman learned of Experiment 626's escape, she was furious. Tracking his progress, she learned he would soon land on a planet called Earth. Before the Grand Councilwoman could take action, a scientist named Pleakley stopped her. Earth, it seemed, was a protected wildlife reserve. The Federation was using it to rebuild the endangered mosquito population. The Federation's only choice was to extract Experiment 626 quietly, but doing so would require the help of someone who knew the creature well. Against her better judgment, the Grand Councilwoman ordered Jumba and Pleakley to retrieve the creature. On Earth, just off the coast of Hawaii, a young orphan girl named Lilo glided through the ocean, playing with fish. Swimming to the surface, Lilo made her way out of the water to her dance class. She was late. Again. Lilo explained that every Thursday she brought a peanut butter sandwich to her favorite fish, Pudge. The problem was her sister Nani had forgotten to buy peanut butter. Lilo was late because she had to go to the store. At Lilo's explanation, a girl named Myrtle began to make fun of her. Angry, Lilo spun around and pounced on the girl. Lilo's teacher asked her to wait outside for the rest of class. When the other girls finished class, Lilo tried to apologize for her behavior and asked them to play dolls. Instead, the girls ran off, leaving Lilo all alone. Feeling rejected, she ran home. A few minutes later, Nani arrived to pick up Lilo from dance class. Finding the studio empty, she raced home to look for her sister. On her way, she was nearly hit by a man in a blue car. Shouting at the driver, she sprinted away. Nani dashed up her driveway to the front door. When she tried to open it, she found the door locked and nailed shut. She stuck her head through the doggy door and saw Lilo on the floor, listening to music. Nani begged Lilo to let her in. A social worker was coming to meet with them any minute. Grabbing a hammer, she began to pry away the nails Lilo had used to seal the door. At that moment, the blue car Nani had yelled at earlier rolled up, and a man named Cobra Bubbles stepped out. 
He was Nani and Lilo's new social worker. When Mr. Bubbles learned Nani had left Lilo alone in the house, he was less than pleased. Looking around their house, he saw pots boiling on the stove and dishes everywhere. Mr. Bubbles began to ask Lilo about her life with Nani. Lilo tried to answer the questions, just like she and Nani had practiced. But Nani's signals confused her, and she told the social worker Nani disciplined her five times a day with bricks. Nani tried to stop Lilo, but it was too late. The social worker had seen enough. He told Nani she had three days to change his mind about what he'd seen, or else he would have no choice but to take Lilo away from her. After Mr. Bubbles left, the sisters got into a big fight. Lilo ran away to hide, but Nani knew her tricks. Nani pretended to leave the room and waited. It didn't take long before Lilo emerged from her hiding spot. Nani scooped up Lilo and tried to talk to her. She couldn't understand why Lilo would act in a way that would make the social worker want to take her away. But Lilo didn't want to talk. Pulling away from Nani, she raced up the stairs. Nani followed Lilo and the fight got worse. The two sisters called each other names and complained about how difficult the other one was to live with. Finally, Lilo stormed into her room and slammed the door behind her. Nani waited until they both had time to calm down and then went to talk to Lilo. She apologized for yelling, but that wasn't what Lilo was upset about. Lilo admitted she had hit Myrtle and explained that people treated her differently. Nani hugged her close. If Lilo stopped fighting, Nani promised to stop yelling at her. Lilo smiled. That sounded good to her. Suddenly, the lights started to flicker. Lilo raced to the window just in time to see something crash to earth. She quickly shoved Nani out of her room. She wanted to make a wish on the fallen star. Nani let herself be pushed out of the room, but as Lilo made her wish, Nani listened in. To her dismay, she heard Lilo wishing for a friend, one who wouldn't leave her. But Lilo had not seen a falling star. She had seen Experiment 626's ship. Not far away, the creature stepped out of the ship. Experiment 626 soon made his way to a road. As he looked around, a truck came barreling down the road and accidentally ran over the alien creature. The next morning, Experiment 626 awoke to find himself inside an animal shelter. All around him, dogs cowered in fear. At the front desk, Nani and Lilo talked to the shelter worker about finding a pet for Lilo. None of them noticed the creature crawling along the ceiling. Experiment 626 scrambled over their heads and right out the door. But Jumba and Pleakley were waiting for the creature. They fired their guns at Experiment 626, narrowly missing him. Thinking fast, the creature raced back into the shelter. Perhaps he was safer there after all. With Nani's encouragement, Lilo made her way into the back of the shelter to pick out a dog. But there were no dogs to be seen. They were all hiding from Experiment 626. Looking at an adoption sign, Experiment 626 had an idea. Hiding his extra arms, he threw himself at Lilo. Lilo was surprised, but charmed. Lilo walked back to the front of the shelter with the creature close behind. This was the dog for her, she told Nani. Nani tried to change Lilo's mind, but Lilo had made her decision. Nani and Lilo signed the paperwork to adopt the creature. Lilo handed over the license fee and the creature was hers. The only thing left was to give him a name. Lilo looked at the creature over and announced his name was Stitch. 
Outside, Jumba and Pleakley watched the shelter. Stitch sensed them and began to bark. The shelter worker scolded him, spraying him with water for barking. Stitch, who hated water, growled. With the adoption complete, Nani headed to work. Lilo turned toward home when she heard a bell ringing. It was Myrtle and the other girls from dance class. Lilo ran over to introduce them to Stitch, but the girls just laughed at her. Just then, Stitch spied Jumba and Pleakley again. Tossing Myrtle from her bike, Stitch scooped up Lilo and the two rode off together on the bike. Stitch paddled around the island. He had been built for destruction and all of his instincts told him to find a large city to destroy. But time and again, he encountered water. There was no way off the island. Meanwhile, Lilo was thrilled to have a friend. She dragged Stitch everywhere with her. They got snow cones, rode rides, and even went to the beach. But each place they went, Stitch misbehaved. That night, the two met Nani at her job. She worked as a waitress at a luau. Her friend David worked there too. He was a performer. As David put on a fire show, Nani waited on a strange couple. It was Jumba and Pleakley in disguise. They were trying to spy on Stitch. At another table, Lilo showed Stitch a picture she had drawn. It was of him. She told him his badness level was unusually high. They needed to work on bringing it down. Suddenly, Stitch smelled something good. It was a chicken leg. He followed the smell to Jumba's table where the alien snatched him up. Stitch fought to get away and bit Pleakley. When Nani's boss saw what had happened, he was furious. He fired Nani on the spot. At home that night, Stitch ran around the house making a mess. He tore things apart and even sprayed juice from the blender all over the kitchen. Nani tried to convince Lilo to return Stitch, but Lilo refused. She reminded Nani what their father used to say, Ohana, that means family, and family means no one le gets left behind. Reluctantly, Nani agreed to let Stitch stay. Lilo showed Stitch to her bedroom. He would sleep in there with her, but Stitch just tore apart the room. Lilo sighed. She couldn't understand why he wrecked everything he touched. That night, Stitch woke up Lilo. He was holding a book, The Ugly Duckling. As Lilo told him the story of the duck that had lost his family, Stitch grew thoughtful. Crawling back into bed, Stitch took the book with him. He was not so different from the duck, he thought. He wondered where his family was. The next morning, there was a knock at the door. It was Mr. Bubbles. He'd heard about Nani losing her job and had come to ask her about it. As Nani started to answer, Stitch threw a book at Mr. Bubbles. Nani apologized, but Mr. Bubbles wasn't having any of it. He warned her to get a job and warned Lilo to turn Stitch into a model citizen or else. When Nani tried to find a job, Lilo tried to turn Stitch into a model citizen, just like her idol Elvis. But when she tried to teach Stitch to dance, he ended up breaking a watermelon on a farmer's head. Next, Nani tried to get a job at a cafe, while Lilo tried to teach Stitch to play the guitar. He was very good, but his music was so loud, it shattered all the glass around him. On the beach, Nani tried to work as a lifeguard. Lilo tried to get Stitch to perform like Elvis, but when people started taking pictures of him, he grew angry and attacked them. 
Behind the scenes, Mr. Bubbles watched as Stitch destroyed each job opportunity that came Nani's way. Out of ideas, Lilo and Nani slumped on the beach. Just then, David appeared. He invited them to go surfing with them. Soon, Lilo, Nani, and David were enjoying some waves. Stitch watched the three playing, eager to join. He had grown quite fond of Lilo. Unfortunately, Jumba and Pleakley were still watching Stitch, and they knew something Lilo didn't. Stitch's body was too dense to float. If he went in the water, he would drown. Jumba and Pleakley saw their chance. They swam behind Stitch as he surfed and grabbed him right off the board. Stitch tried to grab onto Lilo for help, but she was dragged underwater too. David and Nani rescued Lilo and Stitch, but it was too late. Mr. Bubbles had seen the whole thing. He told Nani he would be back to take Lilo the next morning. As Nani took Lilo home, David looked down at Stitch. Shaking his head, he said it was Stitch's fault. Nani was losing Lilo. Then he walked away, leaving Stitch all alone on the beach. Stitch was heartbroken. At home, he heard Nani telling Lilo they were going to be separated. Stitch listened as Nani sang to Lilo. He knew he had to do something. That night, Stitch lifted Lilo's pillow and looked at the picture she kept there. It was her whole family. Seeing him looking at the picture, Lilo explained that her parents had died in a car accident. Lilo asked Stitch what, what had happened to his family, but Stitch didn't know. He had no memory of the family. The first person to love him had been Lilo. Lilo told Stitch he could be a part of her family if he wanted to. Stitch picked up the ugly duckling and made his way to the window. He was no good for Lilo. He had to leave. Saddened, Lilo told him he could go, but she'd remember him just like she'd remember everyone who left her. All alone outside, Stitch looked at his book. He felt lost and lonely, just like the ugly duckling. But unlike the ugly duckling, nobody appeared to answer Stitch's calls for help. The next morning, Blakely received a call from the Grand Councilwoman. Angry at his and Jumba's failure to capture Experiment 626, she fired them and sent Captain Gantu to recover the creature. A short time later, Jumba found Stitch in the woods, waiting sadly for his real family. Jumba explained that Stitch had no family and never would. He had been built to destroy nothing more. Meanwhile, at Lilo and Nani's house, the two were waiting for Mr. Bubbles when David arrived with news. He'd found a job for Nani, but she had to go now. Telling Lilo to stay put, she raced off after David. In the woods, Jumba tried to snatch up Stitch, but he ran all the way back to Lilo's house. Jumba was close behind Stitch. Lilo and Stitch tried to fight him off, but Jumba was too strong. Picking up the phone, Lilo called Mr. Bubbles and told him aliens were attacking her house. On the street, Nani watched as a fire truck raced toward her house. Lilo and Stitch had managed to stop the aliens, but they had blown up the house in the process. Nani arrived home, just in time to see Mr. Bubbles put Lilo in his car. Lilo listened as the two fought. Nani wanted to keep Lilo, but Mr. Bubbles would not allow it. Opening the other door, Lilo slipped out of the car and ran away. In the woods, Stitch carefully approached Lilo. He handed her the picture of her family. Angry, Lilo told Stitch he had ruined everything. Nodding, he revealed his true alien form. Shocked to learn he was one of the aliens, Lilo shoved Stitch away and told him to leave. Stitch hung his head and turned to go, but before he could, 
Captain Gantu showed up. Springing a net, he captured Lilo and Stitch. Not far away, Nani searched the woods for Lilo. Suddenly, a giant foot came down, nearly crushing her. It was Gantu. Nani watched in shock as Gantu loaded Lilo and Stitch into his spaceship. Stitch managed to break free, but Lilo was not so lucky. As Stitch tumbled toward the ground, the ship was blasted off, flying away with Lilo inside. After Stitch landed, Nani swiped at Stitch with a long branch, knocking him to the ground. She knew Stitch had something to do with Lilo being taken, and she wanted some answers. Turning, Stitch began to answer. Nani couldn't believe it. He could speak. But before he could say anything, Jumba swept in and scooped him up. At last, he had captured Experiment 626. Suddenly, Pleakley noticed Nani. He tried to ignore her, but she pleaded with him and Jumba to help her find Lilo. Shaking his head, Jumba told her they couldn't help. They were only there for Stitch. Sinking to the ground, Nani began to sob. Stitch watched, moved by her tears. He slowly approached Nani and reminded her of the meaning of Ohana. Family means no one gets left behind, and Lilo was family. Turning to Jumba, Stitch asked for help. Jumba could hardly believe his ears. After all experiments 626 had put him through, he expected help. But Stitch could be very persuasive and Jemba agreed to help rescue Lilo. On Gantu's ship, Lilo looked at the picture of her family. She had been left behind with no one to fight for her. Then, out of nowhere, she saw a ship. It was Stitch. Stitch bumped Gantu's ship, drawing its fire. Gantu chased Stitch's ship through the mountains and over the beaches. As they passed over the ocean, Stitch ejected himself from the ship. Stitch landed on Gantu's ship, but he could not get inside. Throwing himself to the ground, he stole a truck and drove it into a sea of hot lava. This was his last chance. Puncturing the truck with his claws, Stitch used the heat from the lava to fly back up to Gantu's ship. Breaking through the glass, he ejected Gantu and rescued Lilo. Both ships crashed to the water, where David was surfing. Seeing Lilo, Stitch, Nani, and all of the aliens, David agreed to bring them back to the shore. As soon as Stitch made it out of the water, a hand seized him. It was the Grand Councilwoman. She had come to retrieve Experiment 626 herself. The Grand Councilwoman was touched as she watched Stitch say goodbye to his family. As Stitch headed to the Grand Councilwoman's ship, Lilo shouted out. She explained that she had adopted Stitch and she had the certificate to prove it. Taking him would be stealing. The Grand Councilwoman smiled and handed Stitch to Lilo. She would allow him to carry out his banishment on Earth with Lilo and Nani as his guardians. Stitch and his new family watched as the Grand Councilwoman left. His family was little and it was broken, but it was good and he had never been happier to be a part of it. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.